This message comes from our 2021 lead sponsor of NPR Music, State Farm. To celebrate their surprisingly great rates, State Farm invites you to discover the surprisingly great genre space music. With its ambient roots, space music has tranquil, relaxing sounds that will transport you to a different galaxy. If you're looking for something out of this world to vibe out to during your next listening party, space music is your jam. Make sure to check out space music, then check out State Farm's surprisingly great rates. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. This message comes from our 2021 lead sponsor of NPR Music, State Farm. To celebrate their surprisingly great rates, State Farm invites you to discover the surprisingly great genre space music. With its ambient roots, space music has tranquil, relaxing sounds that will transport you to a different galaxy. If you're looking for something out of the... One. For NPR Music, I'm Gwen Tompkins in New Orleans, and welcome and thanks for joining our live listening party for Chris Stone Kingfish Ingram and his new album, which is called uh, 662. Chris uh, Ingram grew up in Clarksdale, Mississippi. He's, uh, uh, he's joining us from his tour date in Chicago, and we're so happy to be doing this with you, Chris Stone. Um, it, the album 662 is amazing. It's a wonderful album. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you guys for having me this morning. I really appreciate it, for sure. <laughs> oh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. And, and of course, 662 is the area code for where you come from, right, in northern yes, Mississippi? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. The uh, Mississippi Delta, pretty much the area code for the area, and um, born and raised, pretty much. Yeah, well, apparently so. And um, and your album really reflects those roots, I have to say. Now, this is your second album, um, uh, Chris Stone Ingram. Um, I don't know whether to, call, whether to call you Chris Stone Ingram or Kingfish. I'm going to call Anything's you cool. Anything's cool. Anything's <laughs> cool. All right, so Mr. Kingfish, this is your second album. Okay, the first being Kingfish back in 2019. And then, of course, this one, um, 662. And it starts with some screeching kind of rock and roll sounds, right? Good man. And, um, and then it re- the album kind of relaxes into um, varying tempos of the blues. That's the best I can do right now, you know what I mean, haven't, haven't heard it. And what's so interesting about it is that you seem to mature with each passing song. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like Thank seeing mission like... Mission accomplished. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like stop action, you know what I mean? And like, you, here you are, and then you really, you know what I mean, by the end of the record, you are you know what I mean? You're older and wiser, you know, and uh, and so can you talk a little bit about your songwriting process, you know, and um, because this this is an album that was it wasn't made. The writing wasn't done like on the backs of envelopes or anything on on planes, jumping in, you know, in and out of planes or in hotel rooms. This was an album that was written. Uh, by you and of course um, your uh, your producer and um, co-writer Tom Hambridge, yeah, and uh, this was done while you all were standing still. You know what I mean during COVID, right? During uh, t- 2020's COVID lockdown, right? Yes, ma'am. Uh, pretty much, uh, I just wanted to uh, utilize the time that I was given. So uh, me and Tom got together. I want to say all the way from May to September. Every Thursday, sometimes on Tuesdays, and we would do Zoom links while we're on now. And we'll just throw out like concepts and ideas. And sometimes him and, uh, uh, well, sometimes he and uh, Richard Fleming, they would uh, throw a song at me and I add something to it. So through like May to September, we got like 21 songs done. Mm-hmm. And September, we recorded all of them in a week. And uh, now we're here. For the direction for the record, I just want to like, you know, show the growth. Uh, that I, you know, pretty much, uh, you know, got uh, in like the past two years, you know, uh, since the first one, you know, it's a whole lot of growth, like musically, vocally, and um, and personally as well. Well, that's certainly true. I love this idea of your your Thursday sessions with Tom. It's like Thursdays with Tom, Cambridge. It's like therapy each week. Yes, ma'am. Right? Yes, ma'am. Most definitely. Most definitely. He'd be like, he'd be like so man, so what's going on, you know, now? <laughs> you know, and I would tell him and you know, it'd be some wild stuff, and then, you know, sometimes, some things that, you know, get into, like, life lessons, you know, I'll tell him a situation, and he'll come back with a story, and, you know, give me his perspective on it, and, you know, it's a whole new song idea out of that, so most definitely. 
That's interesting. That's interesting. And so, and what's interesting is like you are, obviously you were considered a child prodigy. You're 20, 22 now. Is that right? Or 23? Yes, ma'am. Uh, 22 back in January. Ooh, 22 in January. Does that make you a Capricorn? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Last day, the 19th. All right. So you're 22, which is not too young anymore. It's not so old, you know. And um, and you appear, as you, you know, as you're describing, you really do appear to be sort of unveiling yourself. You know what I mean? Song after song after song. And um, particularly on songs like I'm Not Gonna Lie or Too Young to Remember or That's What You Do. And even that bonus track that you all did, which is called Rock and Roll. I mean, you're you're showing us, you know, parts of yourself that we haven't seen before, which is really interesting, both, um, you know, I mean, musically in terms of instru you know, your instrumentation, but then also lyrically, you know, I mean, which is so interesting. And so how, you know, does this take guts? I mean, how, you know, I mean, is this an act of courage to write about yourself? Um, not at all, because for once. You know, for one, I'm in the blues, and the blues is your story, you know, and for, you know, a long time, you can, you can get, you can get through, and you can get past singing someone else's story, but, you know, there's going to come the time, you know, people are going to, like, wonder, hey, man, what's, you know, your life about, you know, how do you think, right. uh, what's going on in your head, so I remember uh, the artist, um, one of my favorite artists and actually like a big brother man Kel Mo you know you know that was a big thing that he told me you know it was about you know originality you know like it's, it's best to show people what's going on in your head you know come up with like new concepts and talk about your life because you know uh it's always going to be the ones around here singing Stormy Monday and all the other ones you know you know you know come up with what you got going on so most definitely Sure. It's true. I mean, it's so funny you should mention Kev Mo because, I mean, you, you know, uh, you obviously have, have uh, worked with him before on more than one occasion and all. And he's, you're right. I mean, his early songs especially. I mean, Am I Wrong? You know what I mean? And songs like that. I mean, you um, really feel like that's a guy I know. You know, that's, you know, he's living an imperfect life, but boy, is it an interesting one. You know, a soul one. Most definitely. <laughs> but we're here to talk about your music, so we'll put Kev Mo to the side. All right. But um, and so when you know, we're just about to turn this this album on. So, you know, I mean, for the people who are listening and, and for the two of us, I mean, um, you know, I mean, what should we be listening for? Uh, man, uh, I, would, I would say just listen to the story, um, pay attention to the musicality, uh, uh, just Pay attention to it all, like the whole, like the whole team, like the whole enchilada, pretty much. Just pay attention <laughs> to the whole thing, you know. Just hey, and uh, tell me what you get out of it. I, I will say, you know, one of my favorite tracks on there. Uh, I really want everybody to pay attention to. Um, uh, another life goes by because a lot of people think that blues is supposed to be about, you know, my baby left me and you know guitar solos and cotton fields, but really blues was originally protest music. So I, you know, I wanted to, in order to talk about the blues that we have today, we have to, now that's something you have to take courage in and, and talk about and write about because that's the blues of our today. So that's one of the songs I really want people to like pay attention to. All right, then we're going to listen to it. We're going to listen to um, the whole enchilada, as you say, you know, and, uh, and all. And so this is the album 662. We're going to listen to it in its entirety, and uh, and then we're going to be back. And uh, Chris Stone, Kingfish Ingram is going to be here. We're going to talk about the songs that we've heard. And um, and for those who are listening um, and watching right now, don't forget that while we're listening to the, to the record, that you can join the chat, all right? So if you have any questions or comments, um, ask them there in the chat, right there on, um, you know what I mean, on this thingamajig that we're on, Zoom, <laughs> and all, and, um, or YouTube, and, uh, and we'll, get, we'll get to them after the last song. So here we go with Chris Stone, Kingfish Ingram, and his album 662. Oh, 
about it had enough It's way too far from here to where you are Low distance woman You a freaking frequent flyer Always out moving around You never stay in one place too long Long enough to settle down My job keeps me rolling I never stay in one city too long Being a part of missing your touch It's hard to keep a good thing strong It's way too far from here to where
Everybody's born with hate Hate is taught to them How can you judge someone By the color of the skin We need to pay attention To the helpless cries We need to pay attention To the helpless cries We gotta stop the madness Before another life goes by Another life goes by
not right You're distant from me, baby Haven't said a word all night Something's wrong I got a bad, bad feeling You're already gone Silent treatment is wearing me out. You told me you are not leaving, but I have my doubts. Yeah. Something's wrong. I got a bad, bad feeling. You're already gone. Trust my heart 
it always tells the truth. But I can't keep on pretending that I'm not losing you. Something's wrong. I got a bad, bad feeling. You're already gone. Something's wrong. I got a bad, bad feeling. Something's wrong. I got a bad, bad feeling. Something's wrong. I got a bad, bad feeling. You already gone. Already gone. Already gone. Jacked it up and I watched her go. And now 
smile when I think of you But there's a hole inside my heart I think of the things we went through And it tears me apart I'm okay most of the time Till someone mentions your name And I'm right back in that place That's all it takes That's all it takes That's all it takes I tell my friends I'm happy I don't let my sadness show After all the love we made It's so hard to let you go I'm okay most of the time To someone mentions your name And I'm right back in that place All it takes That's all it takes Shining bright I'm only thinking About the now There's not a memory Inside But the night Comes closing in And my mind Starts to wonder And I'm right back in that place Right back in that place That's all it takes That's all it takes That's all it takes
Look out the window Watch the little towns go past And if I got to run I need to get there fast I got to see you I got to see you I got to look in your eyes Hold you tenderly I got to see you
Clarksdale Live this is my bird Well there's magic in the music Must be something in the dirt There's a drugstore on the corner Something in the dirt And I'm trying to dig it out Well, welcome back. This is Gwen Tompkins. Um, I'm here in New Orleans, and I, I am speaking with, uh, boy, Chris Stone Kingfish Ingram. We have just finished listening to this amazing album, 662. Congratulations again. Thank it's you. really, it's, it's everything I said it was in the introduction. <laughs> well, I'm glad. It's Thank you. Here at Reading. It's a wonderful album. Congrat! Really, this is just lovely. And um, and so, K Kingfish, you are in uh, Chicago right now, right? Uh, you've got a tour date here, uh, there, and um, and of course, uh, these songs are just. I mean, I've made so many notes on them. They're so wonderful. And and you said earlier that they come from the um, experiences and observations that you've had over the years. 
Um, and and one thing that I mentioned to you as we were listening is that many of your songs seem as if they are meant for you to sing again and again and again over time, and that you are going you're. <laughs> You know what I mean? And that you're ultimately, when you're 60, going to be singing these very same songs very differently. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like they, they have room for you to grow up in. You know what I mean? That's what I'm trying to say, I guess. You know, like, like okay. a house that you build and you know you're going to live in that house when you're 23. And maybe you'll probably live in that house when you're 63. You yes, know? yes man, like even some like too young to remember all of those. Like something in the dirt, the whole nine, for sure. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And um, and so you mentioned before we started listening, you mentioned the song "Another Life Goes By," which is a wonderful, you know, I mean, meditation on racial violence um, yeah. and violence. Period. You know what I mean across the United States, as well as probably in the six six two area code of northern uh, Mississippi. Yeah, and yeah, um, yeah. you you say that you wrote that song before the George Floyd murder in Minneapolis? Yes, ma'am. Uh, me and uh, well, Tom Hammers and myself, we wrote that song in L.A. like, on, say, like two or three years ago. And the fact that the song kind of resonates today just goes to show you that we have a problem because that song shouldn't resonate today. You know, you understand? Yeah. So, you know, as, you know, as the song says, you know, it's been going on for decades. And, you know, I may be preaching to the choir. We definitely heard it before, you know, but, you know, it's needs to stop. Well, sure. And it's, you know, as you say, I mean, it's a very sad evergreen of a song. You know, yeah. it's all on, unfortunately, it's always going, it's always been relevant. And chances are, it's going to be relevant for a long time from well, today. Yeah, that's well. true. You know, and, um, you know, but what's also interesting about the song is that, I mean, you lived through 2020, you saw what happened and we saw you know i mean not only what happened to george floyd but we saw what happened to a lot of people you know what i mean because of cell phones and images and and videotape and stuff like that that we you know what i mean of these yes, man, terrible events happening everything but your song is very restrained in a way you're not screaming in this song and nor is your guitar i know i know uh, when people talk about this they kind of scream and you know, but I feel like people listen a little more when you kind of come and, you, and, and, you know, and notice we put the jazzy element. I think, you know, we kind of pull you in, you know, with the with the quiet storm-esque and the, and the, you know, and the jazziness. And you'd be like, oh, man, this, you know, you'd be like, oh, man, this song sounds good. But around the end, you'd be like, oh, man, that was heavy. You know, so yes. that's like, yeah, that's the that's the mission. It's true. And I mean, I may be way off base, but I hear a little bit of George Benson. You yeah, know what I, I mean? well, that's the thing. I'm 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 currently trying to work my way into that jazz world, so I do like listen to our traditional jazz players like uh, Charlie Christian and and Joe Pass, and and the, and the list goes on and on. So George Benson is definitely one of my many inspirations. So yeah, definitely just a little bit of him in there, just, just a, a hint, just a little bit, just a hint. Just yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, it's very. It was very uh, unexpected. And I was like, oh wow, this is kind of moody. It, and and you and was that Kenny Greenberg on guitar also in that yes, song? Uh, yes, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Ma yes, ma'am. Yes, ma is there a bass in that song at all, or no? Yes, ma'am. It's a bass. It's a, it's a bass. Uh, I think um, we used a uh, like a program drum machine beat. If you listen closely on that, uh, one of my favorite parts about the song that bass, uh, rhythm guitar, and uh, yeah, like little accents here and there, like your uh, in chimes and everything. So pretty much guitar right. bass and. Yeah, it was really something. Yeah, because I was looking at the the CD notes and I, I was looking for the bass player, but I I couldn't find the bass player on that song. You know, uh, Tommy McDonald. That's his name. Oh, okay, okay. Tommy McDonald. It was name. nice. I thought it was. You know, I I thought I was. My ears were tricking me because it didn't say there was a bass, and I'm like, but there's a bass. I thought there was a bass. Yeah. But. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> But, you know, probably my favorite song on this record, and I, I, it might not be yours, but it is it is mine, is probably I'm Not Gonna Lie. Because that sounds like you, Kingfish. That sounds like something that you would say to me in the grocery store line or that you would say to anybody. You know what I mean? That this is... Uh, it, 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 it's funny you would say that because that's like, that was one of the songs, you know, Tom is a, is a great, like, writer where you know this is how he works with the guy where he'll take something he says and write a whole song from it 
Well, he heard an interview that I did, and I'm not going to lie, with something I said. And he was like, hey, man, let's take that. You know, let's use that. So, <laughs> and that's how that came. So it's funny you said that. It's kind of cool yeah. how it all intertwined and together. It's got magic to it. It's true. That's Tom Hambridge, right? Your co-writer and yes, producer, yes, right? Yes, and uh, and I just love the rhythm changes, you know what I mean? And it's, you know, it just, you know, it makes you listen cl even more closely. And I love when you say, um, what was it? Um, I was too young at the time. You know what I mean? It's like wonderful, you know, and I let my fingers fly. I That's mean, it's it. wonderful, you know, and it's, and, and of course you get everybody when you say, I promise buddy guy, you know what I mean? And it was just, oh, yeah. hey, 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 that's the, like I said, hey, I like shock factor. So that's the kicker, you know, that's the, that's the pun right there. You, oh man. That's cool. That was, it was, uh, it was a great, it was a great shock factor. You're a little bit frozen for us right now. Are you back? Are you back? Looks like we lost him. Oh, well, maybe he'll be coming back. I hope so. Um, it's just going to take a minute for uh, Chris Stone, um, Kingfish Ingram to get back with us because we're having a lot of fun, as you can tell. And, um, and uh, there's so much more to talk about. So uh, just hang on. Um, you know, it's really interesting to see everyone's uh, messages in the in the chat um, on YouTube, actually. And um, you know, what I mean, and I was as I was mentioning to uh, Chris Tone before uh, we came back, you know, from uh, from listening, I was saying, man, a lot of people have seen you in a lot of different places, you know, and um, and that just goes to show what a what a young person. Um, you know what I mean? What impact a young person can have on so many different people? Um, you know what I mean? Uh, from the White House to um, to Europe to New Orleans to Telluride and you know Chicago and all these different wonderful places. Um, you know, you know, Kingfish is young enough to show up to all these places, and um, and I think concert by concert, he's really making such a wonderful. What, such a wonderful sort of bridge to people in the blues, you know, reminding us that there's a, there's a reason why the blues are at the heart of American music, that, uh, you know, everything may come from gospel, but it very quickly goes to the blues, and then from the blues it goes everywhere. Are you there, Chris Stone? Can you hear me? Oh, you're not connected to audio yet. We need you to connect to audio. Don't you just love technology? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. It happens. It Bye. happens. Wow. Well, I'm so happy that you're back. I'm yes, so happy that you're back. So we were talking about, um, we were talking about, um, I promise, buddy, guy. And you right, were right, saying that was, <laughs> but that was the shock factor that you wanted in the song, huh? Right, right. And like, like, like I wanted to, like, you know, not like funny, but you know, you hear something, you'd be like, you know, you kind of chuckle, you know, you know, it kind of makes you smile. That's what I kind of wanted. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Did you ever have a conversation with Buddy Guy about oh, yeah. about this oh. about that that song or about the idea? Did you ever? When did you promise this man? What can he? What can he claim against you right now? I wouldn't. I wouldn't say. I wouldn't say I promised to him like physically, but it's like one of those things. You know, when you hear him talking in interviews about. You know how he feels about the current state of the blues you know he kind of you know you kind of like let him know hey you know i'm one of these ones that you know that's trying to take it for you know me you know me you know and a whole lot of others so you know that's what pretty much the, you know it's kind of like you know a uh, figure of speech in a way mm. but it's very it's very powerful because um you know buddy guy as you well know you know i mean he's sort of seen as the last one of the last of the you know what i mean of a generation that just really change the world you know um and so um and so let me ask you this i mean how much pressure does something like that put on you i mean you know not, i mean we all want to see you blow up i mean your your music is fantastic you're a wonderful musician um and all but at the same time i mean you know you are making you're making people believe or at least say that you're the future you you know i mean that that blue sits on rests on your shoulders 
Yeah, it is. Uh, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that. You know that. Uh, well, it's peer pressure, but at the same time, I wouldn't say that it all falls on me. I would, you know, not to toot my own horn or anything, but you know, I think, you know, you know, I think, you know, you know, me, you know, and a couple of other my brothers and sisters out there that's trying to show that young black kids are into the blues. You know, not like people, who, you know, were contrary to proper belief. You know, so like, I feel like that's on there, and I feel like, you know. I do other things musically, but at the end of the day, the gist is, you know, to try to get young kids, you know, or young black kids into the blues because this is our culture and our history. So I feel like one of the ways to do that is just branch out a little bit. And once you bring them in, uh, you can sit down and show them about the real raw thing. So that's where the, you know, pressure comes in. I feel like, you know, I have to do that is mandatory for sure. Gotcha. Gotcha. And all. But uh, sometimes, you know, um, sometimes if you're if you're if you're looking back for too long, then you can stumble as you move forward. You know, <laughs> and, uh, you know we try to we try to tell that to the uh, to the periods of the genre. But you know how that you know how that goes. So. <laughs> Well, that's certainly true, man. And so, you know, I love the liner notes um, to the, the album liner notes to 662 um, Kingfish because th they were written by a fellow named Wayne Goins. And he says this thing that I just think is really so sweet. He says, um, he, he, this is how he describes you. He is a beautiful baby, a soul brother, a man, one who has already evolved into a higher being since his first release. I mean, I can't think of higher praise than that. Sweet. <laughs> I mean, and, and nobody wants to be called a baby at 22, but you do have that very, you, your face is like, it's like a baby face. It's just so I you know, Yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> but I think that what he's trying to convey <laughs> also, hmm? say what? Say it, say it more. Say, go, oh, no, I, was gonna, I appreciate that. No, no, you're fine, you're fine. No, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> and um you know and and there's there's also something very elegant i think about um a point that he's making in the liner notes too which is that you in many ways are are reminding people of this very elegant point that blues players have been making for a long time which is that there is beauty in the world you know what i mean and it's not and and um you mean and that there's beauty in the south you know, and, um, you know, I mean, people like Lightning Hopkins and Mississippi John Hurt and, you know, I mean, and other uh, performers, they, you know, I mean, I can think of songs that they've sung that are, or performed that uh, convey those points, you know, I mean, there's something beautiful. What do you want people to know who are listening in Japan or in England or in Kenya or in Telluride? What do you want people to know about the 662 area code where you're from, northern Mississippi? 662. Well, uh, not only do I want to do, not only do I want them to know that it's my home, but I want them to know that this is, you know, the birthplace. This is the, I wouldn't say the foundation, but like a, a, a part of the foundation of everything that we have, um, everything that we have musically. Um, it's the blues. It's the, and not only it's the music, you know, it's the people, um, you know, one of the big things I want people to understand about blues culture is not only just music and notes, but understand that it's the people, it's the food, it's the it's the atmosphere, it's the you know, it's the smoke, it's the drink, it's all of that. Everything, you know, everything, everything goes into it. So I, you know, I want people to understand that. And that's when I put all that, you know, in 662. You know, a lot of people get up early for work and a lot of people getting high is all that. So just understand that it's all that in the culture. It's true. And what I think we were talking about this earlier, um, you know, people have, I don't know if people really understand outside of the state of Mississippi, just how beautiful that state is. You know what I mean? Oh, just driving through, driving through the Delta, you, you know, we, we, we know so many, we've heard so many cliches about the Delta, you know what I mean? But driving through the Delta and in the hill country, and, and that's what makes the stories that come out of that area so powerful because they're against, they happen against the backdrop of such beauty. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It's funny you mentioned the hill country. That's where my mom is from. She's really? from the area. Like, Princess yeah, yeah, like, Ingram. Like, 
yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. So like she would always make that joke. She said, you know, I'm from the hills, but you know, I come down and you know, we in the flatlands, you know, in Nat Oklahoma. So yeah, beautiful landscape, yes, ma'am. It really is. It really is, you know. And then, you know, there's another song that that um, might be my second favorite song on the album. And I think it is called, let me make sure I got it right, because it's just so great. Um, let's see. Oh, That's All It Takes. That's All yeah, It Takes. And I, yeah. I think it's because I'm old. And, um, and I, I, it, it reminds me of like a song you can dance to on, you know, a beautiful yeah. dance floor. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say, I, I wouldn't. I would, I wouldn't say old this this season, maybe, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't say old. <laughs> <laughs> nah. well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, sure. But if there's something you know what I mean. There's something very romantic about this song. Very romantic. You want to like hug your honey while you're listening <laughs> to this song. You don't well, you? Well, well, you know, well, uh, when we you know when we get to talking about love, you know, one of the uh, one of the masters of singing about love was Sam Cooke. So, you know, he's also a hometown hero of mine. Like Sam Cook, I had him in mind when that song was coming and I was telling Tom about another experience and that song came out and when he added the horns to it, the finished product, I was I was very like, you know, like elated because it was my mission, though. It was the compass. I want to have like a 60 soul, like retro soul Sam Cook vibe to it. So that's who kinda like I had in mind when that song came about. Oh yeah. And and Sam Cook, he's from Mississippi, isn't he? Yes, ma'am, same part, uh, Clarksdale, uh, Cahoma County. That's right, Definitely. from your hometown, right, exactly. Yeah. And um, and I, I too, when I heard the horns, I, I literally wrote down, horns, exclamation point, you know? they were. It was nice to hear horns on your music, you know? Uh, is, that, is that Julio Diaz who plays horn on, yeah. on that song? I'll be honest, I haven't gotten a chance to meet the horn section yet, but I... <laughs> You know, from where they sound, they are they kill us. So <laughs> they, they kill us. Well, definitely. Well, he might be the horn section, actually. I right, have to right. Say, probably just be one guy playing all parts. You never know. It works exactly. But wasn't it on your last album? You said that you didn't. You you didn't. Was it? I, I don't like the word love, or I don't use the word love. Didn't you write uh, sing that on your last album? And now we talking about love here. What happened Love to you, baby. Kingfish? Hey, like I said, growth. Hey, hey, growth. Hey, hey, uh, growth. Keyword right there, growth. <laughs> there you go. Yes, and I think that this is this is this is one of your songs that will most is one of the most likely to be covered by other artists. Oh, you wow. know, I hope so. Is, I hope yeah. So. You know, because it's it, there's something very compelling about it. You know, what I mean, very, very compelling. Thank and you. Um, yeah, and so t you know, I mean, you know, I I was telling a friend the other day, I called Apple. You know, what I mean, the, to fix my computer. I was on the phone with them for four hours, and for two hours, I'm talking to the guy. He wants to talk about guitarists. You know, <laughs> he wants to talk about his favorite guitarist, right? So, um, so for the people who are listening and the people who've been watching on YouTube and, and on, you know, I want to talk with you a little bit about your 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 guitars, you know, and your playing, ooh. right? And so you're saying that you're using a Stratocaster. You're using what else are you using for your? What what are your favorite oh. um, guitars? Well, well, I well um I'll go through what I used on the record um. I because of the players that I like, you know, that are steeped in blues, you know, a humbucker guys. I've always been like to the humbucker sound. So guys like Albert King, BB King, Freddie King, Otis Rush, and um, that sound was dominant on my first record. But on this one, we kind of had a variety. So like the first guitar I used, uh, a friend of mine on the East Coast by the name of Mike Shertoff, he built you know some guitars for me. One happens to be this uh, Telly Les Paul uh, configuration. So I used that for like my harder songs, the humbuckers. Uh, I had two Fender Strats. Uh, one's a custom shop. The other one um, is a, a American 60s Strat, which is pretty cool. Uh, and the last thing I use is something that's pretty cool to talk about because I come from Mississippi. I'm really like infatuated, you know, like with vintage, like uh, PV gear. So I had a, um, there's a guitar called the PV T60. It was built mm. in Mississippi, like, you know, from the 80s to like uh, maybe like early 90s, if I'm not mistaken. So I have like three of them. So I use like one of them on the record. So I use those for like the rockabilly type of tunes. Oh boy! Well, I tell you, you sound so clean on these al on this album, on these songs. You know what I mean? You don't play dirty. You don't have like a dirty martini kind of kind of style there. 
<laughs> well, you know, I try to be clean in the nose and try to not make, you know, you just try to be listenable, as John Mayer put it. You know, you try to be listenable, pretty much. Yes, ma'am. Boy. And so, you know, how much are you listening to the John Mayers of the world and the, uh, you know, I mean, and other guitarists who are working today? How much do you listen to them or do you just, or, you know, what's on your iPod? Uh, I always listen to, like, the John Mayer, um, even the uh, even the um, R and B sensation um, her you know I you know I love her uh, uh, Carlos Santana you know like uh, and and even guys that are like you know in my business um, uh, other young guys like me they're doing their thing like uh, in St Louis Missouri uh, Marquise Knox uh, over there in Georgia uh, John Tavis Willis. Uh, uh, his first record was produced by Kel Mo, and um, mm. it was nominated for a Grammy along with mine. So it was, uh, so there's like a lot of like young people out here that I'm listening that's really doing their thing, you know. Uh, so yeah, just all over the place with the music. <laughs> well, okay, well then you open the door then, Kingfish. Um, you know, in, speaking of her, when is there going to be a her on one of your records? I mean, <laughs> you got a lot of boys on these records. Right, a lot of boys. You and Tom Hambridge are writing your songs, and then you're performing them, and the band is all male. But the blues is not about just one gender, my friend. Okay, <laughs> so you can sing. You know, I mean, there are a lot of women out there who can play and sing. Hey, well, I'm glad you said that. Uh, uh, uh. One of my big sisters in the blues, she's like one of the like, you know, young people that's doing it as well. You know, her name is Shabika Copeland. Oh, I was, is she uh, good? She's like blessed vocalist and is amazing. So I had a chance to do some work with her on her last album. So never know what we might try to conjure up. So I'm, I'm going to do that one just for you. I'm going to dedicate that one to you. I'm going to dedicate that one to you. <laughs> great did you ever see that film lightning in a bottle you know it's uh i know i've seen some parts of it have you seen her with robert cray they i did, did, that I, did, Bobby I, did. Blue I did i did song, I, did. I pity the fool oh she sings it she um, amazing amazing she, they make a wonderful couple and uh you know what i mean and i don't think she's ex you know what i mean she's an exclusive singer so i mean I'm, she i think she would be very happy to perform with you you know but uh you really you know and I was actually thinking about Shamika Copeland and um, and I pity the fool when I was listening to one of your songs. I think it was the one about, um, oh, wait, let me get the name. Um, I think it's You're Already Gone. You're Already Gone. Um, that and uh, there was another one, too. Um, your Time Is Gonna Come. Yes, you know? Because it had that same kind of, bye, okay, see you. It's, it's hurt. It hurts, but... You know, go when, ahead, hey, 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 go ahead and leave. You know, you know, we're in a, you know, we're in a time today. You know, you don't, you know, you don't need anybody to waste your time. So you just <laughs> gotta, just gotta let them know. Just go and get on. So yeah, okay, plus, Mr. Mr. Kingfish, you are twenty two years old. You hey, got a lot of time to waste. <laughs> hey, 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 you know, just hey, you know, these are these are from personal experiences. It may be hard to believe, but I'm just saying, you know, I, I like I'm not exaggerating when I. Say that this record was like more personal so like hey i've i have a i've had a lot of things to go on in the last two years so yeah, that's, that's, that's the best way i can you know convey it <laughs> you well know? that makes sense yeah no i i understand that and um you know we're, we're we're we don't have that much time left but there's a song that that we all didn't hear that's actually on your record it's um it's a, a bonus song and it's called rock and roll Yes, and I think that you all released it as a single earlier. Uh, last you know, year. Last year, 2020. But it really bears listening to again at some point. So I'm hoping that the folks who are watching on YouTube will do so. It is a wonderful song. And I'm assuming this is a song about your mother. Uh, uh, yes, ma'am. My mom, she passed, I uh, want to say December 2019. She was like my biggest supporter when it came to this and a lot of people and she and she 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 made that known so uh that song you know uh we want to we kind of you know made uh well it was it was brought to me by my manager and uh ashley ray and uh uh sean mcconnell uh they were the original uh, writers and singers of the song so they you know came to us for it you know at a show we did in nashville and uh we took it and revised some lyrics and uh made it a tribute to my mother uh to my late mother so that's it's a beautiful. Uh, Thank you. 
it's a beautiful song. Tell the people what the what the chorus is. Tell them what the chorus is. Uh, so I, <laughs> this may sound weird. I don't want nobody to get appalled, but it's it's, it's just a metaphor. Uh, uh, so I can sell my soul to rock and roll. You know, she made a you know she made a deal with the angels, so they'll never let go. So I can sell my soul to rock and roll. Pretty much, just you know, she gave her life that I could. Do what I do today. That's pretty much. That's all with it. I love Take that. It. Yes, ma'am. I love that they she sold her up. soul to the angels. Yes, ma'am. So that tell me more. Tell it. Tell you again. She sold her soul to the angels. She made a so, deal with the angels, uh, so they'll never let go. So, uh, so I could sell my soul to rock and roll. Wow. I love it. I just love it. I mean, and I'm glad that it's on this album, and I'm so glad that we got a chance to talk today because it, you really you. have made my summer, you know, with this. Oh, six, thank you. Six, I, I, really appreciate it. I really, I really, I really enjoyed the, the conversation. Most definitely. Ah, you're very sweet to say so, <laughs> <laughs> but I certainly have. I mean, it's been really fun. And, um, and again, I want to congratulate you, Chris Stone Kingfish Ingram for talking with us about, uh, about your new album, six, six, two, you're talking from Chicago. Um, they're lucky to have you today, and uh, we've been lucky to have you as well. Now, 662, I want to tell everybody um, who has been uh, listening, uh, 662 is out today, um, and it is available in all places where great records are sold. So, um, again, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kingfish. Uh, thanks so much, and I also want to add that we started 662 tour today in Gary, Indiana, here in Chicago, so we'll be hitting the West Coast. East Coast, all the all, all the uh, Midwest and South East. So, this is, this is all two. the coasts. Yeah, call me Kingfish.com. <laughs> Have everything. Just want to let you know. Peace. Peace. I'm Gwen Tompkins in New Orleans, and you've been listening to a wonderful listening party with uh, with Chris Stone, Kingfish Ingram. Uh, have a wonderful day, and listen again. Thank you.